Hello everyone, my name is Nguyễn Nam Phương, but you can call me Harmony. Let's talk about AI, shall we? AI, or artificial intelligence, has been with us for a very long time, precisely ever since the middle of the 20th century. And yet, we are afraid of them. Some of us are constantly worrying about the day that our finest creation will turn on us. And when you think about the fear of AI, did you know that they have existed for such a long time that it is impossible for anyone to pinpoint when it first started? But I think it all began when someone came up with the brilliant idea of making a movie about robots that kills people. Yikes. And when you think of those who are afraid of AI, who do you think of? Elderly citizen, conspiracy theorists, boomers. In contrast to that belief, everyone is afraid of AI. In an article published on January 31st, 2022, about an experiment done in two countries, China and Germany, there was 1,613 participants, and the results were fascinating. From the German sample, they found out that your gender can affect how you react to AI. And in the Chinese sample, they saw a positive correlation between age, openness, and agreeableness, and being acceptive towards AI. Moreover, it is always assumed that young people like you and I are not afraid of AI at all since we interact with them daily. However, my little survey will prove you wrong. This is a survey that I did a month ago with my friends or friends of my friends. They are all 17 years old and attending high school. The results were as follow. A half, and by that I mean a solid 50%, are concerned about their future with AI. This begs the obvious question of why are we so afraid? We've never been like this, around things like microwaves or toasters. And yet, we are terrified, absolutely scared. Through research, I found several reasons to this fear of ours, with the first one being a psychological phenomenon called the uncanny valley. It happens when you encounter something, that closely resemble humans, but themselves are not human at all. Take the robot Sophia, for example. She's a social humanoid robot made by Hanson Robotics, a company based in Hong Kong. Her robotic parts, when paired with human parts, tend to creep people out. It's unnerving somehow. And when she speaks, her voice is very monotone, but her face is overly dramatic. Another reason is that AI is more than capable of stealing our jobs. And it's not like they're not doing it now. In a CPR article, it is predicted that hundreds of millions of positions that do not require soft skills, i.e. communication skills, will be lost to AI. And by 2030, 45 million Americans will lose their jobs to AI automation. By the next 10 years, though, millions of people will lose their jobs, while 375 million of jobs will disappear. They will go poof. See, this happens because AI is far, far more capable than completing tasks than any other human. More than that, they do not require breaks, insurance, or any payment. Maybe a little fixing fee along the way, but I think it's not much for those big organizations. And here is when I want to touch on a more serious topic. It's about AI being biased. You see, in real life, there's a thing called a compass criminal sentencing algorithm. Somewhat short shorten that name. And it is used to predict the likelihood of someone who has already been arrested 
and how possible they will commit another crime. What ProPublica found out though, is that you have a 70% chance higher of being perceived as a potentially violent offender because you belong to the ethnic minorities. This means that real judges can make wrong assumptions that ruin people's lives. Well, then you must be thinking, well, Harmony, if there's something wrong with the AI, people must say at least a word about it. Well, random person, I don't think you're right, because the AI itself is made by their IT department, so why do they bother questioning it? And the people, the people are not going to say anything either. This is because in a psychological experiment, experiment done by Stanley Milgram after World War II, he found out that a normal citizen, just like you and I, will electrocute another person past the point of death just because a person in a lab coat tell them that the experiment must continue. This proves that AI bias is very problematic in our justice system. However, though, we are not too late. We can still fix this. To fix AI bias, everyone needs to work together. Business analysts, clients' representatives, not just the developers only. They all need to partake in a discussion about errors that cause AI to become biased and how to fix them when they happen. Their discussion will be featured as a formal part of the plan as well as the validation processes. The thing that they will talk about will be printed in the documents about the products. In a Forbes article about a method called Equity as Code, it suggests that we should put AI through a test before it is released to the public to see how it will operate in real life circumstances. And after being released, the AI should be monitored 24 7. Why? To see if there are any mistakes that slip through the first test. Do not worry though, those issues will be taken care of in the next maintenance. And also, did I mention that there will be every test for each and every single maintenance? In the end, while people see AI as malevolent being that can harm people, I see them as children that needs teaching. Because you need to keep in mind that they learn things from us, information that are fed by us. So they will treat us how we treat other people either be gentle or hunting us down like herds of animals. Thank you.